This is video number one for chapter one, and in this video we're going to talk about integers and absolute value. So it goes with section 1.1 in your book, um, and those pages are pages two through seven. If you're looking for examples, um, and the homework will be from pages two through seven in your book. So these targets, you need to write them down. There's two targets that we're going to cover in this section. The first one is that we can find and compare integers and their absolute values. So knowing where integers are and uh, which ones are bigger and smaller. And then I can also use integers to represent real life values and solve problems. Okay, so you have your notes ready. We're going to talk about some vocabulary first on the next page. I have them filled in here, so write them down with me as we talk about them. The first word is integer. Integer. So this whole chapter is about integers. Um, and the difference between 6th grade and 7th grade is now we go from just whole numbers that were mostly positive to doing problems with negatives. So an integer is a po all the positive and negative numbers. It's the whole numbers and their opposites. But it does not include fractions or decimals. So some examples of integers would be uh, 5 and negative 5. Those are both integers. Or 27 and negative 27. Those are integers. But some things that are not integers, negative 3.2, not an integer because it has a decimal. Um, 1 half, not an integer. Our next word is absolute value. And I think you heard a little bit about absolute value last year. Absolute value is the distance away from zero. So I can have positive numbers, and they have an absolute value. And I can have negative numbers and take the absolute value. But it's always just going to tell me how far away it is from zero. So here's my number line. For example, if I want to know the absolute value of 10, well, it is 10 away from zero. So the absolute value of 10 is 10. If I want to know the absolute value of negative 5, it is 5 away from 0. So a negative 5 has an absolute value of 5. Absolute value also has a symbol, and we would write it this way. If you want to know the absolute value of 10, we put those bars around it. So 10 was 10 away from 0. And the absolute value of negative 5 well, it was 5 away from 0. Absolute values are actually always positive because it's always telling you the distance away from 0. Our next word is the commutative property. The commutative property just um, states that the order, the order doesn't matter when you are adding or multiplying. So the order that you add two numbers or the order that you multiply two numbers doesn't change your answer. Then we have associative property, and that refers to how you group things. So how you use parentheses to group numbers together, that does not matter when you are adding or multiplying. We'll do more examples with both of those. And then the last one is additive inverse. Well, the additive inverse is the same. It's just a fancy way of saying opposite. So some examples of additive inverses. Um, negative 8 and 8 are additive inverses. When I put them together, they're going to make 0. Um, negative 14 and positive 14. If I combine those together, they would equal out to make 0. So it's basically just an opposite. So next I want to go over five different ways that you can think of integers. So thinking of positives and negatives. The first one is a number line. And you can just jot these down or do a little picture in your notes. On a number line, we have positives and we have negatives. Here's all our positive numbers. And they keep going. And here's all of our negative numbers. All of the numbers you see here are integers, including zero. So they get bigger as we go to the right. As we head this way, the numbers get larger. And as we head to the left, this way, the numbers have a smaller value. So that's one way to think of integers, right and left on the number line. 
The next way is money. Think of money. If you earn money, so let's say you earn $10, that's positive money that you get to keep. So earning money is like a positive integer. Spending money, if you go to the mall and spend $7 on lunch, that's like negative money. A negative integer for spending money. Or if you owe money or you are in debt, those would all be negative integers. If you gain money or you get paid, those are positive integers. We could use positive integers to represent those. So think about money when you come across story problems or, or um, any problems where you have integers, money might help you um, be a good way to think about it. I don't know if you've seen this one before. This is the third way. This is called a chipboard. And in this model, we actually have things that we can count. So you can actually count positives and count negatives. On a chipboard, we always put the positives to the right again and the negatives on the left. So uh, these little chips are things that I can move around. This would represent one negative. It's a chip over on the negative side. This would represent a positive. So if I went like this, my whole board right now would be showing two negatives and three positives. So you can actually think of negatives and positives as things that you can count. I can count that there are three positives and two negatives on my board. And we'll do some examples with the chipboard in the next section. You can think of um, moving forwards and backwards, like a football example. Here's my little football guy. So he runs forward, maybe um, makes a catch, or they kick the ball and they're moving forward. That would be like moving to positive integers. But maybe you get a penalty, or you get sacked, or you run the wrong way. Those would be negative integers going backwards. Here's another example. Um, you're on a road trip. You're trying to get to the Mackinac Bridge. You drive away from home. Away, or sorry, you drive away from the bridge. That would be like negative distance. Um, then you actually go forward down the road. That would be like a positive integer. So you can think of integers as moving forwards and backwards. So that's our fourth way. And then our fifth way, up and down. Think of a thermometer, right? Um, Positive, going towards the positive integers, the temperature is getting bigger. These are your positives up the thermometer. Negatives are down here, getting colder down the thermometer. So up and down can help you think about integers too. Okay, next on your sheet, we're going to uh, do some examples of absolute value. So two numbers with the same absolute value. Well, remember, absolute value means a distance away from zero. So if I want to think about two things that are the same distance away from zero, you could give me an example like um, positive 4 and negative 4, because they're both 4 away from zero. So basically any pair of numbers, a number and its opposite, are numbers that have the same absolute value. I could write it like this. The absolute value of 4 is 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. They have the same absolute value. So take a second, pause it. Um, you don't have a ton of room, but try these real quick. Find the absolute value of each one of these. Remember those bars, these bars mean find the absolute value or the distance from zero. So pause it and try them now. When you find the absolute value, it should just be the positive distance away from zero. So negative 7 is 7 away from zero. 18 is 18 away from zero. Negative 1 and a half is 1 and a half away from zero. So it's the same number, but it's always positive. All right, next example. Again, I know you don't have a ton of room in your notes, but for this one, it asks you to put them in order from least, least to greatest. That's usually how they will ask you to do it. So take a second, write down all of these numbers, and then the order they would go in from least to greatest. So pause and try it. 
first I had to actually take the absolute values of the ones that they asked me to. And so all of those would just become the positive numbers. So I really only have one negative. Right here is my only, whoops, switch colors. My only negative right there, so it's obviously the smallest. And then I just put the numbers in order, counting up so that the biggest, I end with the biggest one here. All right, got just two more slides. This is asking, um, it says examples of commutative property. Whenever you see commutative property, remember we are going to think about order. The order of the problems. So, 6 plus 5, that's 11. But so is 5 plus 6. They give you the same answer either way. 11 plus 2 gives you the same answer as if you did 2 plus 11. Or 4 times 3, same answer as 3 times 4. And 8 times 7 is the same as 7 times 8. So when you are adding, if you are adding or if you are multiplying, the order doesn't matter. But if you're subtracting, come over to these. These do not work not examples, they don't work. So 10 minus 3, is that the same as 3 minus 10? Mm, no. 10 minus 3 is 7, but 3 minus 10, that's going to give me a negative number, not 7. Or 15 divided by 5, well that's 3, but 5 divided by 15, mm, not the same answer. So it only works for adding and multiplying. And our last slide. Examples of associative property. Well, for associative property, we're thinking grouping. Grouping and parentheses. So let's check these out. If I did 6 plus 5 plus 3, I could put the parentheses here, and that would be 11 plus 3, which is 14. Or I could put the parentheses here, and that would be 8 and 6 plus 8 is still 14. So it gives you the same answer no matter how you group it. Or 11 plus 2, well that's 13, 13 plus 1 is 14. Or if I change colors I could group it with the 2 and the 1 together first. And this would be 3, and then 11 plus 3 is still 14. It's going to be the same thing with multiplying. I could put the parentheses here and do it and multiply these first. 12 times 2 is 24. Or I could group it this way and get 3 times 2 is 6 first and then 4 times 6 is still 24. The order is, or sorry, grouping. Grouping parentheses is not going to change your answer when you are using um, addition and multiplication. But it will when you do subtracting and dividing. So take a look here. If I group it this way, if I group those first, 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 minus 2 is 5, versus if I group it this way, now 3 minus 2 is 1, and 10 minus 1 is 9. It doesn't work. I don't get the same answer. Or how about this one? Last example, 24 divided by 6, well that is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Or, but if I group it the other way with the parentheses in a different spot, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. I do not get the same answer. So again, the associative property only works for adding and multiplying. That should be the end of your notes. Ah, uh, thanks for watching.